Hello and welcome to A Celtic World, the YouTube channel and podcast connecting Celtic fans all around this great big planet. From Braemar to Busselton, from Forfar to Fiji, it's A Celtic World and you're all part of it. Now then, I often put up the times and this one is going to be show a change. These are the times from April, basically, from the next show. That we're going to be out Celtic Park time 11 a.m. So daylight savings playing havoc with everyone's worldwide worldwide schedules here. So that's what it's going to look like from now on. Have a look at those times. See what they mean for you. Let us see who we have. Do we have a few of the regulars in the comments? The Celtic yeah. World regulars or worldies we could call them. Well, that Don't do fun. that. That, that caught on. <laughs> Who's the snitch? Do that. The hill gentleman. Monty, morning, y'all. And McNuggets in there saying hello to both of them. Frank Kennedy, all the big names. And many more joining us as we go through the show. So. Who's joining us? It's obviously Michael in Glasgow. Let's say hello to Michael. First of all, how are you doing? Hi, I got Yeah, I'm doing well. Looking forward to having Celtic back. I'm delighted. It seems like that international break dragged a little, and especially with the, with the results for Scotland, there wasn't anything positive at all, in my opinion. So it would be good to get back to Celtic, and hopefully it's positive for Celtic for the rest of the season now. Well, personally, I thought I've really enjoyed the international break because of what we've been doing here. You know, we've had some really good guests on. We had Baz, we had Hamish yesterday, we had Paddy McCourt, and tonight we're going to be playing Lone Star CSC. So that's pretty interesting. I was going to say, Paul, prior to this, Michael's our, you know, journalist friend, you know, the guy that interviews players and all, how exciting, but now we're firmly in that category after yesterday's show. Yep. Uh was pretty uh, pretty awesome to have uh, Paddy McCourt on, and um, yeah, going back to back tonight with uh, me and you joining uh, Michael tonight as well. But yeah, it was great to have a chat, and I think he enjoyed it as well, which I think's uh, just as important. Um, and he uh, he he indicated he might be keen to come back on, so I guess watch this space. Yeah, that would be awesome if he came back on. Okay, so what we're going to talk about. Well, we've kind of just touched on Paddy's day. Uh, the only other thing, I may as well say it now, is that uh, we have a winner of our competition. Would you believe? I spent most of the international break sifting through all the entries to the competition. <laughs> and we have a winner, and it's Bill McCabe, winner of possibly the easiest competition in the history of competitions, because all he had to do was send us an email. Once it was did. restructured. <laughs> Once it was restructured. And so for that, he wins two free tickets to the Axon Paddy McCord event in Grace's on the 4th of April. And as it happens, uh, Bill had already bought two tickets for that event. <laughs> but he's donating those to the Jamie Tierney appeal. So good on Bill for that. It's a win-win-win situation. Isn't that what that's called? So we're going to talk a little bit more about the... Uh, the Paddy thing before moving on to Celtic news, what's been going on. Then we'll play the interview that Dano and I did with Lone Star CSC recently, which is really very entertaining. You can be the judge of that. And then when we come back, we'll do the Livy preview and Celtic socials. So just to round out the Paddy's day section, uh, how good was it to chat the Paddy McCord? It was awesome. Uh, you can... Watch it if you haven't seen it already. It's on the YouTube, our YouTube channel. It, we did it as a live stream yesterday, but it obviously stays there. You can find out things like, did Paddy enjoy the TV show Derry Girls? How come his brother's name is Leroy? Why did my brother's name nearly get me into trouble at a Northern Ireland match? Why did Stephen Kenny write Paddy a letter? And why can't Celtic attract the best young Irish players anymore? 
all that and more. Michael, have you had a chance yet, or are you going to be rushing to watch it after this? I'll be rushing to watch it after this, especially hearing all the details. And he would have a good knowledge of what's going on in Ireland, and specifically mm-hmm. with Celtic. They've, they've got Ida right now, but we're not really bringing through too many Irish players into the first team. So it'd be interesting to see what he's got to say. Because he's been there and he's done it. He's been to Celtic. He's been in Ireland. He knows, he knows what it takes to get into the Celtic first team. So it's, it's certainly be interesting to hear somebody who has experience. It's always good to listen to an ex-player and their experience of the game and what they know that we don't know because we're always on the outside. So they, they know exactly what it's like to try and break into Celtic. And I can imagine it's probably even harder now than it was a couple of years ago. Indeed. Look at this comment here from Monty. I just wanted to say how much I enjoyed this podcast. I'm on a few pods, but this one is good stuff. We are blessed to have so many Celtic pods. They do a lot for people's mental health. Remember that? Well, absolutely. And ours as well. You know, it's good for us to get on and talk to people. In fact, the reason this began is because I have had nobody in my life practically to talk to about Celtic and nobody to watch the games with, you know. So now we have a wee network of chums all across the planet. So that's a very nice message, Monty. Appreciate that. And it's nice to think that we can do our part to, you know, keep people's spirits up. Um, Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we don't pretend that we exist in a vacuum. We name check other podcasts as well. We did recently, didn't we? Uh, Huddle Breakdown and... Uh, Celtic Exchange got a got a good uh, shout out for their recent series, which everyone's been raving about. Michael, eh? yeah, it was yeah, it was brilliant, I, especially because I hadn't known all the guests that was coming on, and just every week it was new guests, and the the podcasts were like well over an hour. But I was just sat watching them on my TV when I had the time. It's it's just stuff you wouldn't even know about where Celtic Stadium wanted to move and stuff. Rob Royston, like, such fine details that from the outside, not too many people knew at the time, even, like, my dad, when I was saying to him about it, he wasn't too sure about it all. It just shows how much that was going on in the background that Celtic fans just weren't aware of. Right, well, let's bring that very message forward. I'm just going to do up my shirt a bit. I'm showing a bit too much skin there. And I'm looking very, like, uh, what's that comedian with the collars? Harry Hill. Oh, people, Harry Hill. People like to There's do another one to add. We've got Harry Hill, Penfold, Dickie Attenborough. Uh, feel free to add in the comments if you've got any others. We'll we'll be delighted to to add them to the list. Okay, I can take it. Let's move it forward into all the stuff that's going on around Celtic at the moment. Uh, as you can see on all the other channels, people are you know talking about the same things because there's very little. So we'll just run through them relatively quickly. I think before getting on to the Lone Star video. So the Brendan Rogers hearing, Nick DeMarco, King's Counsel, we're all familiar with that name suddenly, from Blackstone Chambers. Would you believe it? He does a podcast called the Sports Law Podcast, which I tried to listen to (laughs) earlier on today. But I really recommend it. If you have trouble sleeping, it's a wonderful little uh, (laughs) thing to tune into because, you know, the law of anything, Sports law, entertainment law, that's always the dullest part of whatever the particular thing is, if you ask me. So, uh, but, you know, he's a good man to have around. Who who has done a deep dive into the legal career of Nick DeMarco? Michael, have you written a piece on him? I've not written a piece on him. I was reading a few on him, but he's certainly had an impressive career. And it's, it's not just in Scotland, it's in England, representing teams like Leicester City, Nottingham Forest. And when you look at English Premier League, there seems to be so many cases going on against points deductions, etc. So he's experienced in that. He successfully represented Scott Brown previously in a case that I think we could all agree was questionable at best why Scott Brown was pulled up for his celebration because he was allegedly antagonising when he obviously clearly wasn't. So, and with this Brendan Rodgers case, I believe Celtic's argument could be somewhere in the region of talking about managers who've previously criticised referees, but haven't been pulled up for it. And I'm sure if Celtic look into that post-match interviews with plenty of managers, even in the Scottish Premiership in recent months, they've probably not been given a match ban or anything like that. So Celtic certainly have a case in this matter. Well, that's the thing. If if he's able to employ pointing out double standards in the past, then that's what won him uh, 
the argument previously. That would certainly seem like fertile ground, would it not, Paul, if you were representing us? Well, well, absolutely. You've got to try and you've got to try and sort of manipulate it how how you can. By the letter of the law, he's bound to rights. It's just a case of of what the punishment's going to be, I think, and and that's where those other counter arguments will probably come into play. Um, if you haven't seen it, while well, we're talking up um, other pods and and shows, um, friend of the show, Hamish Carton from Celtic AM did a really good video yesterday. If if you haven't had a chance to watch it, it's only about fifteen minutes long, but it digs into this in in quite a bit of detail. And he's um, he's actually gone back over the last few years and found other examples where managers have been pulled up on the same charge or even see more serious charges in the same area um and what the potential out what they said and what the you know what the outcomes were um and it seems that he found a couple of examples won't spoil the whole thing but he seems to be hamish is, is sort of suggesting that it's it's his expectation spoiler alert if you watch it is um too much ban with one of them suspended um so that would mean he's out of livingston but but back for ibrox so if we can if uh, Big Nick can uh, can negotiate that uh, outcome, I would say that's a pretty good result for for us in the uh, in the circumstance. But he basically showed a pretty similar example in terms of content, and that was the punishment. It was Gary Caldwell, I think, four years ago, maybe sort of something mm -hmm. like that. So interesting. Well, I would example. say to to Mo, you know, that what about her is is relevant if you're going to be uh, talking about even-handed punishments. By the governing body, it's not well, a courtroom. It's not a courtroom. It's not a court of law. If you want more information, I can refer you to the Sports Law Podcast, where they discussed at great length whether football disciplinary proceedings were a court of law or not. It can be appealed to a court of law. Interestingly, interestingly, well, I'll let you decide. All right. So connected to that, the referee has been announced for the Livingston game. Michael, strange. It was that's so strange to have the referee officiating a game a couple of days later, and then we talk about the head of the referees resigning. I also want to say that that, that could come into matter in the court as well, because in uh, the court the appeals process. Because why is the head of the referees resigning? But sort of message does that send? I'm sure Celtic would even bring that up because that, because that's no coincidence. Let's be honest that, that that's not just going to happen after this whole case is has been announced that the head of the referees resigns. That sets about the precedent of what's been going on with the referee decisions in Scotland. So for me, that that's a big factor. And having Robertson uh, be the referee in the weekend is just so confusing. There's so many referees that they could have chosen from. It, sh it shows that the SFA are just really proving a poor message to us. I, d I don't know why they would do that. What other league in the world would probably do something like that? It makes absolutely no sense. And I know Rogers was mostly annoyed at John Beaton, but it was Robertson at the end of the day who makes the decisions on the pitch to overrule himself with VR. It's so confusing, the whole process, and even how the SFA have gone about it. They don't help themselves. They make themselves open to further criticism. They don't collaborate well with clubs and make it easy for Celtic to solve the situation. So for me, it's just poorly managed from the SFA in every way they've done it. Yeah, and also the proceedings aren't public. It would be good if they were. That was another thing to in the podcast. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should revise my uh, theory on that podcast because clearly a few things did go in which were uh, relevant. All right, but we're not going to go on about all that stuff too much. I'm sure you've all digested it elsewhere. Who's the player that is said to be impressing in training and is going to come back amazingly, Paul? Yang. So, yeah, um, Rogers uh, has been quoted on um, on Yang basically a bit about his his work on the training ground um, during the break, but but also more broadly, I guess, about um, the time it takes players to settle and and a bit of patience and all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, very very positive. He also said basically Nick, Nicholas Kuhn was was sort of had been you know playing well, which he has in the last couple of games. Uh, and he used, I think he used the phrase, um, so we've now got some options on that side. So, um, yeah, it can only be good news. Yang, Yang showed plenty in uh, in, in flashes and, and, and fits and bursts. Um, 
But as I've said here multiple times, is I don't think he was intended to have a heavy involvement this season. But you know, the nature of recruitment and injury has meant that he's had to be involved a bit more than was probably intended. And yeah, he hasn't always been able to cope with that level of expectation. But he's it's great to hear that he's he's looking good and he's working hard in the gym and I think putting on some upper body weight, which will help him in one on one duels and and yeah. Fingers crossed that he can have a strong run in because we need everybody that's available to have a stronger run in to all hands to the pump to try and get over the line in this title and double. But really, yeah. where we would have hoped to would have been maybe nine months ago, we have an options off the right. You've got Yang, Kun, and Forrest now, and even Yang Kun can play off the left hand side. Ideally, that's where we would have wanted to be with Jota leaving, but we experimented at times with Maeda moving to the right-hand side. I don't think that's Maeda's best position. So it's finally where we would have probably wanted it to have been at the start of the season. So I can certainly see a lot of positives in that aspect. Yang and Kuhn have both shown great performances in recent weeks and months. So that there's a lot of positives. And it's exactly what you need at Celtic. You need two players, or maybe even three, with Forrest playing well, competing for that right-hand side. So it's exactly what we all want to see. And with Rangers coming up in the coming weeks, it puts us in a good position. Puts us in a good position. Exactly what we want to see. Momentum building up. <laughs> Momentum picking up, fans behind the team, ready for the title run-in. Celtic board, hold my beer. Let's cause an unnecessary drama again. That's from Castro Celtic, our very own Ian. Paul, hitting the nail on the head? Yeah, you know, Ian's, uh, Ian's a reasonably um, vocal and an active guy on, on Twitter, and he's been great um addition to the to the show um but he absolutely nails it here um it i just it's just it's just a bare, a pretty much speechless it's so ridiculous they've, they've the board have effectively shot themselves and us in the foot again um yes there's been an issue with the green brigade but it was resolved we're back in and then it's you know two steps you know two steps forward three steps back at this point last season in the title run in the whole, you know, Celtic end in the Jockstein stand, at the, you know, for the women's games was amazing. And it gave us a little snippet of what potentially might be the case with further like negotiations and, and where we might end up further down the line. Um, and also it was a, it was a brilliant, you know, it's brilliant for the women's team to play in front of that and get that level of backing. And then the board going cause another spat, which basically has led the ultra three ultra groups to go, well, you know, we really want to support the women's team, but on point of principle, we'll, you know, we'll make a bit of a stand here and we, we won't attend those games. So, yeah, disappointing all around. Like, disappointing from, from the club as a whole, disappointing from, you know, working together in one direction, but but also, you know, disappointing for the, the women's team in terms of, you know, just getting behind them. And as they go for, they've got an important title running and, and end of season as well. Um, And, yeah, it was great last year and, and we've sort of gone backwards again in that, in that regard. Disappointing. Sadly. I don't think any is are surprised at this. There's just been the Celtic board maybe over the past decade you could speak about. They've done things like this. And we thought we were over the, the worst of it with the Green Brigade. And realistically, it was no coincidence that we had a poor run of form when the Green Brigade were banned from games. And it helps the players at the end of the day. Rogers spoke about it. I think he's heard, heard players like Alistair Johnson speaking about it. It helps players and even the women to play at Celtic Park. And, and realistically, when the Celtic board and governing bodies were saying, bring, bring the Celtic women's team to Celtic Park. They, they, that's exactly what the women's team would have been looking forward to, having the Celtic end. It looked amazing at the end of last season. It was so special. And it, it was hopefully a glimpse into the future. But sadly, I don't think it means we're going to see a Celtic end in the men's game. I know there was talks about how you have to move season ticket holders and stuff, but it's so sad to see this yet again reaping its head up again for supporters and you realistically the Celtic board just make things way more difficult at times than they need to be and we're all supposed to be one we all support the same football team so they just make everything much harder than it needs to be well I mean it's a very vital time of the season and I think the wording of the statement there is that they don't the Green Brigade saying they don't want to get involved in like a public shouting match I hope we can move on from this thing quickly and just get back to business. As we have to do on this episode, actually, without any more delay, it's time to enjoy the interview we did with Lone Star CSC. 
Jim Smith from Lone Star CSC. Welcome to a Celtic World. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And welcome to Dano, all the way from Korea. How's it going, Dano? Good, man. How are you doing? Well, I'm fine, but our guest of honor is, of course, Jim. Hey, Dano. Jim. Good to meet you. Yeah, yeah good to Jim meet you. From... Finally. Yeah. yeah. Been a long time coming. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Dano's previous job was when he went to the States was to do this, but uh, he was too busy holidaying, vacationing, I should say. He had one yeah. job. Eh? He had one job. He had one job. One job on vacation. Blew it. Okay, Jim. So let's get into it then. Lone Star CSC. Where in the great big Celtic world is that? So Dallas, Texas is where the club is based. Um, we have members for the whole surrounding what we call the dfw metroplex so like myself and probably four or five other members are from fort worth which is west of dallas and then we have members from mckinney and plano and, and some of the, the the more easter south of and uh, north of dallas and we have a good few in dallas itself and, the, and lone star lone star as you see in the picture here the name was taken from the the flag of Texas, where we are the, the Lone Star. I believe we're the only official republic in America is Texas. I mean, yeah. I may be wrong on that. Yeah, Texas for a short time was its own independent country. Yeah. So, yeah. Quite a few of them would like to go back to that, um, but I'm not going yeah. down that road. <laughs> well, so here you go, Dal Dallas and Fort Worth. Yeah. Uh, well, there, most people know Dallas. Yeah, but I suppose Dallas and Fort Worth they've kind of become kind of merged into a conurbation, I suppose. It's almost merged over the last few years. It's the 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 growth here is incredible. That especially the last ten years, there's everywhere you go now that used to be fields in between places is now either houses or warehouses um, or shopping areas, and it, it's just continual growth. It's, it's amazing mm -hmm. to see the last few years, actually. And it's called the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Yeah. Like a Metroplex sounds like somewhere you'd go and play Quasar and watch a movie. and You can the, do that, too. <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> Dano, do you know Dallas-Fort Worth? Yeah, I've been to Dallas a few times. Um, and every time I'm there with my dad, you got to go down to uh, Dealey Plaza where uh, JFK yep. was assassinated because mm -hmm. the whole the whole square, like those six blocks or whatever, are basically like a museum that's been preserved yep. ever since those days. That's uh, pretty interesting. But uh, getting from getting there from the airport is always a hassle. And like the last few times <laughs> I've been with my dad down there, I'm like, Dad, can we skip Dealey? Like, really? You're like, let's just do something else. <laughs> but yeah. he loves it. So uh, interesting place to visit in Dallas, for sure. Yeah, unfortunately, what comes with all that growth is the traffic, right? And the yeah. traffic yeah. here has just continually got worse over the over the years. They're expanding a lot of the freeways and stuff to cope, but, you know. Yeah. It, it, but just looking at, at this map here, I notice up above Dallas, you've got uh, some sort of indigenous First Nation uh, land choctaw nation yeah is everybody familiar with that they, I, I first heard of them through damien dempsey's song do you know he sings a song about the choctaw nation oh. who in the middle of the 1800s gathered as uh, much money as they could together to send it to the irish yeah i remember reading about that yeah them mm. in the famine famine years but so yeah I'll leave, I'll leave a link to that song in the show notes if you want to hear damien dempsey singing about the choctaw <laughs> nation well, yeah, the state of Oklahoma was basically started as a, you know, native reservation. The entire state was basically yeah. for natives removed off their land. Uh, pretty wicked story, man. Well, back in the modern era, Lone Star Celtic Supporters Club. This is from your Facebook page, Jim. This is Blackfriar Pub. Tell us about that. So after COVID, the pub that we showed the games in is an Irish bar called Trinity Hall that we been in for years and years and had been there for years they opened up again after covid which we were delighted with and after a couple of months for whatever reasons marius decided to do a 
as he called it on his Facebook post, an Irish goodbye, and uh, they shut the place down. So after being all excited about getting a, a, a location, especially the folk that were driving from Dallas over to my house, because it's a it's about a 45, 50 minute trek, depending on the traffic. Mm. Mm. Um, after us all being happy to get back in the pub to watch the games, we were homeless again. So um, it probably took us about another, maybe as long as a year um, to find a place. We were out looking and we'd asked a few pubs and of course we reached out to the Irish bars and, and different things and we never quite got anything. And then Nikki Hurst, who is actually one of our founding members, um, who's, who's still on the committee to this day and his good lady, Christina, they noticed that this place was opening up. They had a location in Dallas already, uh, the, the Blackfriar in the uptown area of Dallas, but they were they found out this place was opening and just purely going in and asking. Told them our story and they were like, yeah, we want to get in on the 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 football soccer, you know, market showing the games, especially with Trinity Hall not being there anymore. They knew there was a a need. And uh, we got in there to to start seeing the games. We've been there ever since. We got a, a fantastic relationship with the guys. You know, um anything we're doing from a fundraising event, they'll either, you know, if it's golf, they'll sponsor a hole or donate a prize or in fact the 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 recent one on St Paddy's Day, I got to play in their team. There was three of them from the, the, the pub and myself and the first thing they did was they bought a hundred mulligans. Or a hundred bucks worth of mulligans, so they're always you know up, up to help us out. So there's an upstairs mm -hmm. and a downstairs in the pub. If yeah. there's something on going downstairs in normal hours, we'll get upstairs, and then we're not really bothering anybody. And then if it's an early kickoff, if it's like the six in the morning, it's easier on the staff if they're not going up and downstairs. If there's only one on because it's that early in the morning, we'll get downstairs. So um, it's, it's been probably coming up in two years we're in there now actually and uh, okay well here's a picture of the pub from uh as you can see that's the google van taking uh -huh. a photograph there yep but uh so i had a little look around the area here's uh the lakewood country club see the golf course in there it looks pretty yeah. sweet <clears throat> Haven't managed this to is play the area. That one. yeah this is the la vista drive and uh looks like a really nice area Look at this, how clean and well maintained it is. And, you know, nice houses, nice neighborhood. Now, I know your money goes a fair way in Texas generally. Yeah. Yeah. Compared but, uh, to some of the other states, it does. Looks really pleasant. And here yeah. we go. This is the entry in the book, uh, Football Without Fans, I which have we it featured before on the podcast. Oh, very yeah. good. Or in the show, we've talked about it, done various features on it. Um, well, I guess I can leave that up there for people to read. Uh, yeah, it's a great read. you want read. to give us your, your own version of it, maybe? Fantastic okay. idea. So I wasn't around when the club was formed. I've been over here just over uh, 21 years. Um, and the club was already started when I got here. I am, and when I got here, I reached out online to the two Dallas clubs. Clubs as they were at the time, and the other one, the, the, the original Dallas. Got back to me first, so I ended up going to watch the games down there to begin with. And then as that one started to um, kind of dwindle, um, I ended up migrating over to, to to this one. We'd been into this one a couple of times when there was Champions League games on in midweek and the other one wasn't showing it and stuff. And they uh, got on really well. Got on really well with both, both sets of boys, you know, and he, even to this day, there's a few of them left for the original club in town. We bump mm -hmm. into. Um, but there's still a few left, as you see in the, in the, the page here. Um James O'Sullivan and, and uh, Nicky 
from the, the original founding members are still on the committee to this day. James is a vice president and Nicky's the webmaster. Um, and they've been there from the from the very beginning. Okay, so, all right, let's go inside the pub then. And uh, I'll flick through a few pictures here. You can yeah. tell me who some of these characters are or what the Character atmosphere is like inside the pub. Characters is a very good way to... Uh, describe our members we have some awesome characters um we've a great bunch actually we've got people from all over so we've got um there's a good bunch of americans locals in the in the pub which is awesome and then there's some irish and scots expats as you can imagine we've got um fell from aberdeen boy for kilmarnock um my wife and i were from view park originally oddingston um there's uh james who's our vice president he he's uh from dublin mm -hmm. um nicky's local uh and uh, there's a few round about who are local and then there's a few from uh, mr hannigan from barhead or Borheed, as he describes it um used to live in houston actually was in the, one of the houston clubs and, uh, and then moved up here for work so there's a there's a really good mixer, folks. Um, Joe Miller as as well. Two Joe Millers in the club, old Joe and young Joe, as they're known, um, from Glasgow. Uh, so that there's a there's a really good mix, and there's a good mix of ages as 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 well. Um, and Mister Paul Sud, you can see there with the black top on. That's his mm -hmm. best side, obviously. Um, <laughs> Paul's from Bayliston. So me and him always uh, give ourselves a bit of banter back and forth about, the, you know, being in Lanarkshire. So, um, looks, looks like a good venue there. You can see the pool great, table, couple of a, screens, leafy suburbia outside the window, sunshine. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a really good venue. The, 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 um, I actually like upstairs better, to be honest. Some of the guys prefer downstairs. That's downstairs where you see the pool table. Um, I like upstairs because I know nobody's going to come in to watch something else or hear the noise, and then we we put them out. Uh, what were we doing at that day? I think we had a bad result. We were hiding our faces. Uh, Maybe one of the games we drew this season. That's like some grainy CCTV footage of a crime or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the yeah. guy, the guy in the front is Paul Gallagher, also known as the King of Dublin, mm -hmm. and then there's Richard. Behind him, uh, Richard is uh, originally from England. I think that's myself in the back with a Kano hat on, and that's Nicky mm -hmm. and Paul Devlin, another of the boys from from back home, and my missus Karen hiding behind mm -hmm. him. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, don't know what we were up to in that picture. And they pull a good pint, do they? They do, yeah. Just last week on the run up to St Paddy's Day, they had one of these machines in where you, you can actually download a picture mm. and you take it over to the machine and whatever's as long as the picture's good quality, they'll put that on your um your Guinness. Wow. So there was a few suggestions of what to be put on, but I, I think that's been a politically correct show. We'll, leave, we'll leave that for another day. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, now before we get to this one, we'll come back and got a couple of little videos to, to play. Uh, the first one is, well, I've entitled it Lone Star Songs. So it's pretty obvious what this would be. So let's listen to this and then we'll talk about it when we come back. Okay. Stop up the way you want in. Stand on the way you want in. The only explanation I can find is a long way of fun. If I just beat it run, as I put it on the top of the ring. Oh, 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 girls Thank <laughs> you. 
as you can there see, you uh, we really have a very shy and retiring bunch of people that come <laughs> and watch the games. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's us at six in the morning. Can you imagine? Is it a three o'clock kickoff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It is amazing to think about, you know, how all these songs from the terraces are ringing out in all these disparate places all around the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's incredible. YouTube is Good an awesome day. tool, isn't it? It's a lot of fun yeah. to see see the atmosphere there that is generated in your place. Yeah, That's we've awesome. had some we've had some really good times. I see Mr. Paul Field as well leading some of the, the singing there. Paul's another one of our long term members originally from England. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now you can explain this one to us. Ha <laughs> ha. There she is. All right. I think I'm in there somewhere. Well, the star of the show has yet to appear. The headliner. There's Mr. Smith. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was cleaning up all the empties. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's the story was, behind that? So that was from Cup Final. Uh last year when we won the treble so in the club i was telling you earlier there's a bunch of boys of dallas the wider area plano there's a few for plano um and then there's probably a half a dozen for the fort worth so the banter that flies back and forth between the dallas boys and the fort worth boys and the, the plano pirates as we call them and in, in the chat Right, we're always having a go at each other and trying to up one another, or who showed up first, who stayed out longest, whatever. Right, and it's it's just your normal banter that you get. Some of it is absolutely hilarious. So anyway, we up to the cup final. I just said to one of them, "Hey, why don't we get a limo, and it will save us relying on somebody to drive over because we all take a turn at driving." Half the time it ends up, my missus ends up driving because the other four or five of us end up having a few pints. So I said, if we hire a limo, then we don't need to rely on Karen. And Karen can, one of the four or five times a year she has a drink, mm -hmm. she can maybe join in the festivities that day. So as soon as I said it, two or three of them jumped on it. That's a frigging great idea. So before. The next day, there's two of them sending me an email. Hey, I've got prices. Shiraz was working at Paul Gallagher's working. So we end up, we get a limo. And uh, with it being pushed back to five o'clock kickoff that day, I don't know if you remember the Faroa, where they moved the Scottish Cup final. So it was a different time for the English final. Mm. So I had the, the Fort Worth boys over at mine. Uh, I've got a wee bar at the back door. So we had the English Cup final on there. I had square sausage on, on the grill. We all had our own square sausage and a couple of pints. We watched the first half of the, of the English Cup final. And then the limo shows up. And two of the guys got in on it for, for Plano, Mark and his son. 
they actually Ubered over for Plano that morning so they could come over to mine. And uh, then we had a few uh, cans and bottles in the in the limo on the on the road down. And the minimum you could hire it was, I think, for two hours. So we left early and just said, well, just, just drive, drive around. Drive around. <laughs> and uh, on the way down, we phoned Paul Sud and Paul Fielder, two of the, the long-term men. Paul was a founding member, actually. And they live within walking distance. Mm-hmm. So we phoned Paul and we're like, where are you? Have you left yet? He says, no, we just left. We're a couple of minutes away. Don't move. We're coming for you. He's like, fuck off. It's 100 degrees. I'm not standing out here in the heat waiting on you, Joe. Showing, showing up. What, what are you driving? What are you in? Look, you'll know us when you see us. Yeah. The next thing, this Very little good. pulls up in the corner and the door opens. Here you sit down. There's a can of beer. There's a can of beer. So they, it was an absolute blast. And, how, uh, how many people could that seat? That was a huge stretch. Effort. I think I think we had about fifteen in it, and I think you could probably get about twenty, twenty five mm. in it a push. So, uh, we've, well, here we've let's got... move on to a smaller vehicle, which is hold on. This is uh, one of your golf day out days out. For charity, yeah, that, this this was the one just just the other week, and uh, last That's year you there in the green, yeah, the that's me. Canada. So we had on the so we started an annual St Paddy's golf event. We started it last year, so this was the second one. But we have uh, one of the prizes is best dressed. Although one of the guys won it last year, we changed it to worst dressed. But um, the King of Dublin won it last year, actually. But with it being St. Paddy's, we had the theme, you got to get your, your your green on. So I was disappointed I didn't win. I thought I'd made a really good effort. but I, This but boy it, didn't get the memo. It wasn't to be, no, Kevin, yeah, he, he, he didn't get the memo. <laughs> but if you can <laughs> see the guy the guy next to him, I'm actually, my hand's covering up his face. Yeah. That's Fernando. We'll him. He is we'll dressed in, in, the, in the full shamrock, in the full a leprechaun outfit so i think he ended um, up winning it. <laughs> and the golf course you played at this that sounds like a place in glasgow doesn't it fossil creek was it fossil creek i thought it was fossil park no that fossil was, fossil, was fossil creek, fossil creek the oh, one yeah. we we played it in this year really nice course look at yeah, that hole course. there yeah yeah that, that's one of the holes there isn't it mm. yeah so so, Jim, do you go straight for the green or do you pansy out and lay up somewhere down the, this bit of the fairway? <laughs> it really depends on how many beers I've had, you know. There's <laughs> le- the more beers you have, the less pansy you do, but then you end up just losing more balls, right? <laughs> but, Very good. But, yes. Yeah, so we- as, as it said in the entry in the in the book there about the CSC, you you know, you like to do charity events. And we do. That's what this was, yeah. We do. I mean, the whole ethos of Celtic was that it was founded for charitable origins mm-hmm. and, and reasons to help people out who are less fortunate. And the, one of the great things about our club is we really embrace that and we, and, um, we support um, as often as we can, you know, you, you've got to be conscious of the fact in the current climate that you're not asking people for money every other day, right? But um, we do, twice a year, we do two golf events. We did an annual one at St. Patrick's weekend, and then we take part in the Kano Global event every year, which is normally around about September. And then our Christmas night out, anything we raise at our Christmas night out, we give to the Celtic Foundation. Yeah. And Look at the bottle there, Dano. Yeah. So mm. we, we started this a couple of years ago. We stole it. We went to uh, one of the Houston clubs for their Christmas night out a bunch of years ago, and they had a bucky auction. And uh, myself, Nicky, Paul, Sud, my son was over at the time. And a bunch of us all chipped in and made sure the bucky <laughs> wasn't staying in Houston. We brought it back to Dallas. So every time we have an event since we've ended up having a bucky auction and this particular one at the golf last week uh that's cager he won it 
uh, three hundred and thirty bucks it went for. Wow. Yeah. And that's the fellow you were talking about earlier, who you were. Yeah, obscuring. that's Fernando. Fernando runs the bar, and uh, Kevin next to him, he's, he's got less blue on in that one, so he, he's he's got his mm. green beads on at least. And and then JP in the middle trying to look green as a a, concest, a contestant in the best dressed. You can see the King of Dublin on the left went all in again, but it wasn't to be. Mm -hmm. And Karen, my my good lady. Here for the shenanigans. She was. Now it says here, this is the club, I think, the golf club. These are the supporters of the golf club. Is that correct? So, so as part of the golf, we offer an opportunity to sponsor a hole. And depending how big the event is, either 100 bucks or 200 bucks. And then that goes in towards whatever charity we're doing it for. So the Austin Club's been really good partners with us. Um, they sponsored one. Um, the, the red logo there is the local GAA club. Yeah, they, they, McCool. They, yeah, that's based in Dallas. And we sponsored a whole in their event last year, and we put a team in to the event, um, and they reciprocated back to us. So it was great to see that. Blackfriars, the pub. And then there's a couple of other businesses there. The, the Wolf Tone's actually my my wife's. Uh, she's she's got a little uh, doggy daycare thing going. Oh, is that what that is? The Wolf Tone. The, the in Wolf, Inspire? Yeah, the Wolf Tone and Inspire. It's a, it's a play man. on something. I wonder if you can figure that yeah, out. Yeah, well done, well done. You know, um, and then the Pacer is one of the other guys who works for them. Mister Hannigan. This fella shows up quite a lot in the photos. Yeah, so Mark is uh, from from Borheed, as he says. Oh, yeah. uh, Mark Hannigan. So and what's he winning there? So he is. Oh, this was a prize in the Christmas night out, and you know that picture, uh, Brendan Rogers and a bag of cans. Mm -hmm. So somebody donated a, a four pack of tenants. So we had it labelled up as a bag of cans. So mm -hmm. Mark won that in the in the raffle at Christmas. So there's just a few other pictures here of uh, yeah we managed you know, find to get on your Facebook page the the trophies out. This was us at the Rangers game at New Year. Yeah, so this is you going back to to see a game yep. live. Kind there was a few of us actually made it. Mark Hannigan was back. I was back. My wife was back. That's us all. We all met at the stairs after the game. Mm -hmm. Turns out we were all sitting not too far away. That's Mark's son there, Tim. My daughter-in-law trying to photo bomb on the right hand side, Leanne. So that mm -hmm. was a that was a good day. Our flight was delayed. We went into Dublin, so we missed the first 30 minutes of the game. We're actually the flight over and they told us the weather was so bad in Glasgow they were going to reroute us to Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. And somehow we got a signal on the plane and my wife's texting my daughter-in-law who was trying to pick us up my son and my granddaughter were at the game so she turns around goes to edinburgh and then five minutes later the pilot comes on and says actually we're just going to give it a go that yeah. was his exact words we're going to give it a go <laughs> like filled us with confidence <laughs> yeah um, wow text her back we're going back to glasgow so she's pulling off and pulling on and but she managed to pick us up and we made it and now you are fresh from this event, which just happened within yeah. the last 24 hours or so. This was Thursday night. Yeah. Fantastic. You know what this is, Dano? Mm, no. Go ahead, James. So, so this is the Foundation Gala event in uh, New York. I think this is the fifth year they've, they've, they've done it at the Celtic Foundation. They, they have a, a gala event every year in New York. And uh, as you can see there, the, the guest of honour was Mark Hannigan. No, no, Brendan Rogers. Um, <laughs> Mark Hannigan gives uh, Brendan's pearly white teeth a good run for their money, he, doesn't he? He does. He brushes up well, doesn't he? <laughs> and, uh, so we, we were lucky enough a few years ago to take part. They, they did The foundation arranged a, a walk, a sponsored walk, around New York with the Bronx boys, the Fenian boys, the New York club. And it basically, you were walking from one supporters club pub to another, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stopping over at the Father Duffy stand. At you in Times Square and then ending up at the famine. Museum. 
down and, and uh, I think it's a lower east side near the financial district mm. and we uh, myself Karen my, my my wife and Paul Devlin you can see in the back of the picture there um, we're lucky enough to go up and, and, and take part in it it was a great event, a great, a great day, um, and on the back of that, we were invited to the gala dinner the next okay. year. There's, there's um, mm -hmm. members of the local supporters clubs. They, they managed to have a few seats held back for uh, Celtic CSCs. Now, who's this handsome fellow with his arm around? Yeah, big, big Roy. Oh, feed the bear he was fantastic i got to speak to roy and and said there was a few of us for the lone star club and would they mind coming over for a picture came over and sat at the table and and, and chatted away mark hannigan actually had flew his, his dad over for the event and, and and jim uses a wheelchair so roy came over and sat with jim and they had a, a chat for about five ten minutes so um, he, what he, sort of venue is that you're in? It looks like, it, like a in like a church or something. Yeah, it's a place yeah. called Cipriani's. It's a mm. massive uh, place. I guess it's just set up for hosting events like this. I think mm. there was somewhere in the region of 400 there. Um, and we had 12 at our table. I think most of the tables were set up for 10. But we ended up with an odd number. Um, so fantastic night. And did you get much crack out of Brendan, or did he just come over for the snap? We, actually, we did. Um, got my sign a, a, a nice picture of him his, his first time round, and got him to, to put on it to Tegan, our granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife had a, a bit of chat with Actually, she gave him into trouble because she wrote to him at the start of the season, and he didn't write back. <laughs> and uh, he, he was very adamant that he couldn't have received the letter because he replies to everything. And they, he was, but he was very, uh, he was very open, and he he was good chat actually, very mm -hmm. very accommodating. You didn't ask him any for any inside news about I didn't. summer transfer activity or anything. I I, <laughs> I, I didn't, but I, I think there was one or two did. He did a Q and A as, as well. Tony Hamilton was the MC, and 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 uh, Tony did a a, a Q and A. Certainly left us with a feeling that he's right up for the for the fight for the rest of the season. So mm -hmm. I think we're in good hands. You might know this fella as well. Oh, man. Indeed. Yeah. And Henrik did a, a Q&A as well. Mm -hmm. Here's the pearly whites again. Yes. In evidence yeah, yeah. On either side of that photograph, to be Mark, fair. That, Mark that's, like, like, that's like a game show host, man. Yeah, Mark does like a wee, <laughs> uh, a wee selfie. <laughs> He reminds me a bit of uh, Ian St. John, you remember, from St. and Greavesy? Do you know, there's a few people said that. Some of our pictures, when we like post them on social media, they're like, is that mm. the ghost of Ian St. John on there? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, he takes it well, though. And there's you getting some stuff signed by Henrik. Yeah, I had brought a Lone Star uh, shirt up. We, we've got a little bit of merchandise that we sell at the, the pub, and I brought a a shirt up with me so i got henrik and brendan and and uh, big roy to sign it see he's graying isn't he henrik it's funny he to is. see him like becoming a senior statesman yeah still looks great though he does still, he does. still looks fit yeah. mm. and uh you're making plans for the summertime for the tour yeah we are yes yeah. so we've we've recently there was a link sent out to um most of the U.S. supporters club um, last week and yesterday. After a lot of hard work behind the scenes from the team, gather names and and money and, and the the link initially came out with a, a kind of minimum of ten for your group order, and overnight we heard it was changed to twenty five. So then people were scrambling. This is where the your kind of network comes into play mm -hmm. reaching out to other clubs how many have you got can we pull with you can we pull with you so a lot of text messages and phone calls and um nikki one of our, our 
uh, founding members. He's friendly with the guys in the Chicago club, but he was talking to them. I was talking to the guys in the Philly club and the Orlando club and what the Houston clubs and the Austin club and pulling the resources. So um, yesterday... I was, I was wondering which game, sorry to jump in, I was wondering which game you might go to because they're all kind of equidistant, aren't they? From yeah. You? yeah. Not, not much yeah. in it. So yeah. I'm going to the two weekend games. We're going to Notre Dame and we're going to DC. You can't say Notre Dame. That's too correct a pronunciation. Oh, really? <laughs> N ND. What are you supposed yeah, to say, Dano? Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. There yeah. you go. You and your friends yeah. show level, you see. <laughs> yeah. say it, right? Well, well, if you raise if you raise Catholic in the Midwest like I was, that that football team, the American football team, of course, is yeah. like a semi-religious entity. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to see Irish them Americans. years ago. They they do every couple of years they do a gate a home game, but they take it away and they call it the Shamrock Challenge. Oh they, yeah, they played that down in Dallas, right? They, at, they were at the Cowboy Stadium, so we went Jerry to, World, to that, yeah. at Jerry World to see them. So mm. that was that was good. Um, but I thought the opportunity to to go and actually see the the campus would be too good to to miss. It's a, yeah, it's a beautiful place, man. Uh, yeah. The state the stadium's incredible too. Yeah, seventy seven thousand, I think it holds. So yeah, they've expanded. Yeah, so it used to be like sixty. Now yeah. it's seventy seven. 80. Yeah. Amazing. Well, well, Jim, it feels like we've only just scratched the surface and we're closing in on 40 minutes. So we're going to have to wrap it up then at this right. point. So mm. thank you so much for spending some time with us and filling us in all about your supporters club. Awesome. And if you guys are ever in the DFW Metroplex, you're more than Next welcome. Next time I'm in the Metroplex, I'm going to yeah. give you a shout. I'm Come going to turn up in a limo. Yeah, yeah, come and join us for a game. We're, we're already, they're already talking about how we're going to up this if we get to the cup. You're right. When we get to the cup final this year. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll just be, it'll just be Gav and I in a limo of the same size. So there you go. That's it. Plenty of room to stretch <laughs> out and relax. All right, Jim. All the best. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, Take Jim. care. Hail, hail. Right. Hail, hail. Okay, gentlemen, that was uh, me and Lone Star CSC and Dano, also present. Um, I don't know if that stuttered for you a little bit. It stuttered for me, and it happened when I was moving my mouse around to prepare for other things. But uh, did it play smoothly for you, or were there a couple of little stutters? A couple, but not too many. It was mostly smooth, so you'd expect that about the occasional little stutter. Nothing to worry about. And what was your key takeaway from that, Paul? What, what bit would you like to draw attention to? Uh, look, I just always, it always, um, it's always, I always enjoy that when the American clubs go in, just um, kind of how well connected they are, how they are, they are in contact with each other, and um, they work together on on various stuff, you know, like the dinner, you know, the charity dinner, and and then obviously for for the for these future games. And they've just been, you know, much, you know, really long established and and uh, well attended. Um, so yeah, we, uh, I'd love to get to the states and uh, and pop into to one or one or two of these. But uh, it's been a long time since I was in a in a Celtic supporters club in uh, in the states. The last time would have been the six two game. Um, I was I was in oh. New York for that. I watched that in the parlor bar at about seven a.m. Uh, in New York, and my brother was lucky enough to have my season ticket that day. The jammy so I'd, uh, I was in the states for a month, which was pretty good, pretty good trip to be on as well. But uh, yeah, like I'm much like here, I guess you know you, you're up at all hours and um, and yeah, a lot of dedication. So um, just yeah, do really enjoy the chats with with all the CSCs when they come on. Yeah, and Michael, what was the highlight for you? I liked a few of your comments about the teeth and Brendan Rogers, and then you, you're referencing one of the golf courses sounded like Postal Park. Was that right? You were saying it sounded like that's that. what I thought it said, Fossil Park. So, but it wasn't actually. <laughs> it certainly doesn't look like that, does it? There is a bit. Of Postal <laughs> no, Park. pretty different. I wonder I why people leave. Well, listen, we're uh, we're already over the hour, so and we haven't had a look at the Livingston. Uh, preview yet, so we'll better get on with that, gents. Uh, just while I set up here, you're going to talk to me, Paul, about the fixture. 
Oh, do you know the the, well, the fixture? The fixtures all this week. The next one's coming up. Here they are. Oh no, that's not them. <laughs> this is them. Oh yeah, the the the, 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 the Obviously, our game is a big deal, but but prior to that, um, we've got Hibs at the other lot, um, which could be interesting. You'd expect you'd expect them to win that at home, but. We're getting, you know, getting down at the tight end of the season. And it would be, uh, it would be pretty. Uh, well, if we needed any more, you know, um, impetus, and I don't think we w- we would or should, then um, a little upset there would uh, would put us in a brilliant position. But we assume they'll win, um, so we'll go back to uh, two points behind going into our fixture. And really, the you know, manager's bleated about it, but and, and it's, it sounds like a cliche, but we do just have to concentrate on ourselves until we go and play them the week after. Um, Livingston are really poor. We know that. They're almost certainly going down. Um, but that pitch is a nightmare, and, and they're a big bunch of brutes that will just try and pump us up in the air. And, you know, we don't need to speak about the referee. We've touched that already. So um, for me, the big thing is that who, who actually gets selected Um I know you've touched on it in in previous shows. Um, you know, do we risk players on on that debacle of a surface? And you know, there's an argument for both. You know, we've got to go out and get the three points, but I think there's enough depth in the squad at the minute to to deal with it without risking key players um, that are either just back from injury or not quite back from injury. So, as usual, when you go there, it's three points and up the road, um, and and fingers crossed we can do that. Three points and up the road. Here's the table, Michael. Celtic on top. Are you expecting that to be the state of play at the end of the weekend? I'd hope so. It's not going to be easy. Our history at Livingston, we've struggled there over the years. we kind of gotten over it in the past couple of years. So I'd be hopeful that Celtic get the win. With Rangers as well, a lot of people are forgetting. They've lost the last two home games in a row. Not too many people are speaking about that. So that there is a potential for a slip-up but especially with the Motherwell result and the disappointing European result. So for us, we focus on Livingston. None of us are going to underestimate the game. We know how difficult it is to play there, even with the referee as well. That's a confusing situation in itself. But I can see positives with Celtic. Arguably, the last game was one of our best performances of the season. Things looked to be clicking. Just when Kyogo looked to be maybe just out the side, he's right back and he's scoring goals. So if we have a player like that scoring goals, nobody will stop us. I just hope we can pick up where we left off. That's the thing. Here's the form guide, the last six games. Um, it's, it's, Hibernian, it's been, interestingly, in third. Look at that. It's mm. not been terrible when you think of the Hearts game as well. Like We, we did get a player sent off in that and a penalty against us. When you look at that form, of, we drew the, that other game. So we've, we've not been too far away. Our form's been getting better. So I, I wouldn't be too concerned. That looks to be the anomaly, that Hearts game with the penalty given against us and the red card. So for me, I can see positives. And and on the other game, you know, we're always looking at Hibs to come on, you know, give them a good game, and and they seldom do. But uh, well, they haven't done in a while. But you know, I'm, there's a part of me thinks that they are a club going in the right direction under this manager, and and you know they're they're due a decent result somewhere. And you know they're. In not bad form, as you can see there, unbeaten in their last six. Could this be the one, Paul? Well, we'll, we'll take it. Um, <laughs> Nick Montgomery has got a really good reputation down here, and I've been surprised it's taken him and Tibbs as long, so long as it has to get into a little bit of form. I think certainly the expectation in Australia was that you know he was a really good manager who played in the right way and, and would have... You know, a pretty quick impact there, and it hasn't really happened. He's, he's, you know, he's he's had fits and starts as well, much like us, really. Um, so yeah, what a time for 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 it to 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 continue on and and to get a a major scalp, and we can we can certainly hope that that's the case. And that that form is strong going into the fixture. So and and most of their players won't have been away over the international break and the like. So you know, they they'll have had plenty of time on on the pitch and the practice pitch to to work out. What they how they want to set up in the tactics for the game. So, fingers crossed they can uh, they can take something from that match. But as as Michael said and we've said, we just need to concentrate on ourselves. If we do our job, then we'll go into the game against them next week, top of the table, and a chance to stretch the lead. So that's where we want to be. Yeah, I mean our players need to concentrate on themselves, but we can speculate. 
It doesn't <laughs> matter what we do. Michael, you were about to jump in with something there. Yeah, hey, I was just going to talk about Hibs and the, the last game. Hibs might have something to prove the way that went. The cup game against Rangers, it was quite a fiery game. Let's hope Hibs don't get any players sent off or anything. They, they showed glimpses in that game. They missed a few chances. The Rangers, the, the penalty is questionable. So, realistically, if Hibs are at their best, they could challenge Rangers. But how often have we seen that happen? And particularly at Ibrox, Hibs usually seem to play their best football at Easter Road against the old firm. So, for me... I would edge towards Rangers winning, but I wouldn't rule out Hibs getting a draw. That'd be awesome. Well, we don't have any crystal balls among us, but uh, the Simpsons cartoon seems to have. This is my social media choice of the week. The Simpsons warned us about the cargo ship and P. Diddy. We just didn't listen. <laughs> Amazing when these things happen, <laughs> these news events happen, and there's always a blooming. Simpsons episode about them from you know 15 years ago or something you've been keeping up the date with these stories gentlemen yeah I actually seen something on TikTok it was about the Apple VR headsets and it was looking back to the Simpsons how they pretty much predicted that pretty well so th there's always something that pops up the Simpsons if you look to the Donald Trump episode uh, how almost spot on that was of him coming down the escalator mm -hmm. and then there's an image of him with some world leaders I think they're holding a ball so it's it's pretty spot on. We can't really That's question right. it. The British, Paul. the Brit, well, they've they've been around for 30, 40 years, haven't they? And they've pumped out millions of episodes. So you'd imagine there'd be a bit of crossover here and there. Um, but uh, yeah, that story Simpsons in the states. Theater. That story is in the states with that ship and and um, and that bridge coming down was pretty shocking. I guess the only oh, thing you can be grateful for it was. 1 30in the morning so you know traffic was was light but yeah i think there's still a few people that have potentially potentially um at lost and presumed dead so it's it's a you know pretty tra tragic situation this is quality and I sorry to introduce some humor at a, at a sober time but uh, that's hilarious well i do have a zigzaggy bunch of hair around the back which you can't see because it's always face on but uh, all right, and then there's yours, Paul. Well, yeah, I just, I just thought um, it's been a light on week, so I thought this was um, kind of interesting. We are advertising for a first team analyst. Um, uh, I thought our very own uh, Mahesh might be interested in applying for this. Um, <laughs> he certainly seems to be. I think be doing a, been doing a better job than some of the people we've had in in situ prior. Um, but yeah, look, just the. Yeah. Be, get, be a great role for you know for somebody um so yeah if uh if you're seeing this and that's uh that's your bag then um there's, and there's certainly lots of people that run the stats in in the select support so you know maybe there's an opportunity to get in i think there's a piece of everyone who's reading that right now and thinking yep i, I could do a job <laughs> <laughs> you probably think you could do that job paul quite well do you reckon nah no, no, I'm a, I'm a big picture kind of guy. I'm not in the detail of the stats, so no, nah, not for me. I'm a Michael, inspirational leader. Oh, that's a lot of hard work and not too much credit for it. In all honesty, Brendan Rodgers takes the credit at the end of the day, but he's taking the, the advice from them and how to beat the opposition. And even you talk about John Kennedy, he would get credit as well. But as this first team analyst, realistically, they, they've got to do a lot of the hard work to help the team and how to beat the opposition. It's a tough task. Be brilliant though. You become one of Brandon's, you know, right hand. I might write him a letter actually. Give, I might write him a letter. I've heard that people that do write him a letter usually hear back. Always, he insists they always get a response. And apart, apart from that woman, right enough, she she was the exception. <laughs> so who who could doubt that that's the the truth? <laughs> All right, gents, we've gone ten minutes over the hour, so let's wrap it up there. Another bumper edition of A Celtic World during the international break. Next week, we're going to be back to, uh, you know, talking about games and all that stuff. Um, Imagine. Incidentally, as it stands at the moment, Stephen and Dano are planning to do a watch along of the Livingston game. So if you want some company for that, you know where to find us. Thanks, as always, to our worldies. Am I not allowed to say that? I watched a video earlier on from StreamYard, and they were saying you should do these things, create the little vocabulary among your people. 
give them nicknames and stuff, but it's too cheesy, is it? Too naff. I'll let you up to you. You're the boss, man. <laughs> the democracy. Okay. See if it catches on. See if it catches on. They're not the worldies, but in our eyes, they are. That's the main thing. So thanks for watching, everyone. And if we don't see you at the watch along over the weekend, we'll see you back here on Monday. Cheerio, bye.